Hey, Fossil YouTube lands. So, we did a walk around on the JK, Nat's Red Rocket, but we have the JL. It's been back for a little bit now. We're gonna do a little swoop around this sucker here. I've already done some upgrades to it, but I got more upgrades in the works too, all right? So, we're gonna start real quick here. I'm gonna try and work through this. I'm not gonna say quickly, but we're gonna work through this thing. So, this is a 28, don't fucking look like that. This is a 2018 <laughs> Jeep Wrangler JL two-door Sport S. It does have a factory 44. That's the one thing. If you're looking for a JL, make sure it has a 44. This one does. The only way I know to figure that out is to look at the actual vent. Some of them have a Dana 35. It's like a Dana 200. Dana 200? You're yeah, I think so. I think it's 200. Dana 200. This is a 210, 220. You want the 220 in the back. Way beefier. That way you have something to build on. Not a bad axle. But I found one. Super rad. It may have gone through some. There's a cyclist. May have gone through some, <laughs> some slight... <laughs> Uh, hills and gains in the time I've had it, but we'll go through that. But walk around. First off, up front here is the Warren Elite Series front bumper. This is the stubby, no hoop. It's basic. I like it. It's simple. Tucked inside here is the VR Evo. Now I mentioned in Matt's walk around, I think the X2 is a better winch for the money. It failed Matt when we tried to put him on the trailer, so now I think this well, is well. My ground strap, my one of my ground wires was bad, so it wasn't really the winch itself. It was more of your fault. All right, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so now I love this winch forever. Um, I got some little D-series fog lights up here. I got um, their bride. They're just wired on the factory fog lights, so no extra switch there. Super cool. Um, Sidewinder hook. I think this is a bad thing to buy. Warren makes a badass box. I love their bumper. I love their winch. I don't like this thing. I think that's a waste of time and a waste of money. Do an epic hook. They make an epic hook. Way bigger, way like, more utilitarian. Um, up front here, these are Rubicon fenders. So this is a Sport, as I said, but these are Rubicon fenders. And Rubicon fenders and Sport fenders, indeed, come as two pieces. So there's another truck that hangs down here. It's just glued together. You pull it off, and then you get this huge wheel well to which you can put massive tires. So did that. I did an Artec bracket up front here, super minute. And then I put some Poison Spire lights, LED lights in here for the uh, side markers and uh, turn signals. So that is what allowed me to clear on this Jeep. This Jeep is a, it has no lift whatsoever. It's a bone stock sport. No Rubicon springs, no nothing. But it has 37 inch tall Mickey Thompson Baja Bossom T's. Super impressed by these tires. Big Nitto fan, couldn't get them at the time. Tried these out. I've liked them. Bit softer than uh, the Nitto, but they work. Inside here we have the Artec Inner Fenders. Um, free edition, you know, because gotta love America. Um, love these guys here. They're aluminum, they won't rust. And then inside we got a Fox Shock. Now, the Fox shocks for the front are built for a zero to one and a half inch lift on a JL. The rear is actually a two to three. They're like a quarter inch longer, fully compressed. That allows us to have more droop. Everybody loves droop. Damn right, Matt. I also did some Rubicon Express uh, quick disconnects um, for sake of cost effectiveness. Um, I mean, I've had those on countless Jeeps from ZJs, TJs. We put them on lots of stuff, so they work. Really no problem there. Um, also did, keep with the Rubicon, we got Rubicon uh, sliders here. So those are, we'll just say I got those for a reasonable sum. We don't need to go into detail. <laughs> got those for a reasonable sum. Yeah, we'll go um, with that. Same story in the room with the fender. It's a Rubicon flare with the bottom removed. Still need to buy an inner liner. There is a Fox shock leak connector. That's the one not leaking. Not yet, not bent like Matt's. Um, once again, yeah, that's, the, that's, the, talk about that. that's the two to three. So, super bad ass shock. Um, still rocking the rear sway bar for now. For We'll see how it plays out. I may disconnect that at some point. Definitely need to do some bump stop adjustment. Maybe an inch, inch and a half. Matt Sutter says I need about four inches of bump stop. He's no, I said it. you need fucking two. <laughs> um, but this portion of the vehicle is not as I bought it because of an incident in which I'll post. So, this fender's new, this rocker was pulled out, this piece is new, this fender's new, that fender's new, that wheel's new, and that wheel's new. Because... Talk about the wheels, Jonathan. Wheels, real quick. These are Method 701s? Yes. I always say 501s, but 701s. 701. 701s, which have a special gridded bead to it. It's a couple um, notches in, like three uh, notches in the bead, on the outer bead. It's four layers. Four? Yes. Four or three, you sure? I thought it was four. That's a, it's a number of bead, like thingies. What that does though, it's not a bead lock, of course, but when you do air down, that allows this outer bead to hold on to the tire, which is great because you have a lightweight wheel, which is DOT approved, which you know, that's what we do over you, you need to torque it down or everything like that, but you get some, 
not going to say all because the true V-lock is still going to be way tighter holding the bead on, but you still get some of the pressure from a V-lock. So that's going to help hold on the tire when we're down at low PSI, which is awesome. Yeah. Still going? Yeah. No. We're still good. All right. I'm still so, recording. I just can't see it. Anyway, <laughs> on this side of the vehicle, though, I had the vehicle for three weeks. It looks almost identical to this. We did a couple of altercations, bumpers, stuff like that. But driving down the road one day and an old lady did not see the, the slightly large, very wide red JL and uh, just careened right into here on the vehicle. So we'll insert some pictures. We'll put pictures in. It was super shitty. And real quick, not to be a dick about things, but Safeco Insurance, you can be a customer of them, but God forbid you get hit by one of their customers because they will just take your, see, here's your booty hole and those gonna be like, and just fuck you left and then right. It's great. So, don't deal with Safeco, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but the Jeep is fixed. Still sorting out bullshit from them. Jackson, give me voicemails. Uh, but this is fixed, which is great. Um, it's straight, they did a bunch of new panels, yada yada yada. It will never be the same, and as much as I like to ignore it, yes, the interior panels are net fitted as they should be once upon a time. Look at that fitment. It, yeah, this thing is, the frame's straight, the body's straight, but it's just never going to be right ever again. So, I can think of no way to that, but most of them are going to think safety insurance. Y'all done great. Um, but, needless to say, the Jeep is leased back, and I'll probably do worse things to it in my days, so I'm not too offended by it. More mods. The rear end here, I don't run a spare. A couple reasons. There's not really a good tire carrier for a JL. I mean, I'm, that's a lie. There is good tire carriers for a JL. It's just so much weight and so much stuff to carry around. I already have my good buddy, Matt, with a full-size Mickey Thompson Baja Boss on the back of his Jeep for me. So, love you, buddy. <laughs> so I deleted my spare tire. So I don't have the extra weight. Poison Spider just uh, delete. Um, keeps the camera, got a little light for the uh, license plate. Super dope there. Love that thing. It's clean, it's subtle. Gotta get something to fill this hole. We haven't seen that for months now. Oh uh, yeah, I remember, that. I remember that. Um, so rear bumper, I had a Smitty built on here. I didn't like it because it was so excessive. So I went with this Fishbone rear bumper delete. Um, I kinda, I haven't told you this, Matt, but I kinda would like to wrap something around the outside here to kinda build off it to give it some protection. Yeah, we're gonna do tubes. Yeah, did I say yeah. that? Okay. No, you didn't tell me, I already oh. thought about it. Yeah, so we need, I'd like to pull we something around communicate here. That, something yes. really low key, but at least it's, it's up high. I'm not gonna hit on rocks. Got some D-ring mounts. I don't like that they left this cut out for the hitch, <laughs> but yeah. I'm gonna live with it. Um, <clears throat> but in also doing so, your muffler hangs about down to here. So this is a K and N muffler delete super easy fitment the only thing once again i don't like because i have a gripe about everything is that it is pretty low so i think i may come in and like i think we should cut like these last two inches off or we can just bring the hanger up or we can just hit it until we're like okay that's where it needs to be cut yeah cool we'll do that. so but i like how it looks i mean i was gonna wrap some tubes to protect like this over here but pretty rock and roll um and getting hit by uh, a customer of safeco insurance they bent an axle shaft, so I used that money and paid a little bit more to buy Yukon chromoly axle shafts for the rear. So it, it is 32 spline because it's a Dana 220. It's now Yukon chromoly in the back, which is dope. So we got that. Um, we have an ARB twin compressor that's been sitting in Matt's toolbox for about a year now. Yep. <laughs> Not a year. Yeah. It's been a, no, it's been like four months. Four months that needs to go in this thing. I have the bracket for it. We should really do that at some point. Oh, let's see what you just ordered, Jonathan. I did order a part. So, we need to explain why. So this, the my biggest, not biggest. You see it from the back. One of the gripes of the JL. Oh, also, I forgot. Right wait, 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 wait. We, we have more right, parts, I forgot. Waiting, we also have a Fox TS steering stabilizer, which is super dope. It's uh, one of them that bypasses through. The reason you want that is because these Foxes are nitrogen charged, so they want to push. So if you put just a standard 2.0 on, it's going to make it like it's feel like it, make it like it's feeling, like it's pulling to the left. So it did a ATS, so it travels through, acts like a dual, and then a Rubicon RE-1689 RE track butt. So beefier, I mean, it's not lifted, but hell, it's just the better parts. And if I do lift it, I do have the support to continue that. But up front is the Dana 186. It's, it's a Dana 30 equivalent. It's still 27 spline. And the biggest gripe I could have about it is the center disc center but it's an axle disconnect so up and for fuel here. economy for fuel economy let me go around the back give you a better little view over back. here there's this big old module 
by here. And that's actually a split in the tube. That way, is it? No, it has to be a split in the tube for the actuator to work. Split in the tube, it makes a weak point, and also a weak point not only for like the actual housing, but also the actual shafts. So, it's a two piece it's passenger a two piece axle side shaft. axle shaft. And tube. It's, it's just not good. Yeah. You don't want that, especially running big tires and being a dick to it. And I want to run 40s. So, today, I went and ordered an item. And I have the receipt for item here. I have just the cutoff of what it is. See, I can see the camera. See if we can zoom in there. Look at that. Dana 44 JL front with 488s. And what is that an e-locker? The e-locker. You, e you can only get e-lockers in these. So I ordered it up today, an Ultimate 44 from Dana Spicer. It deletes the uh, the uh, axle disconnect. It puts chromolys in it, puts 410 e-joints in it. I'm going to 488s, which I think is way too much gear for these tires, but... Nah. <laughs> It's perfect. It's a lot of gear. 48s is perfect. Uh, and some of you people out there that are watching this channel and supporting us, <clears throat> definitely be on my side with this one. 48s, perfect. Especially if you're gonna go to to 40s, which on he is 40s, in the future. It'd be okay. I feel like on 40s, I'll be okay. On 37s, I'm gonna have gearing for days. Like this thing's just gonna- what's wrong with that? We drive down the highway to work every day, man. So we don't do more than 80? Mm, 80, <laughs> not 80, 10? 90? 95 yeah we'll go we'll go there so we're gonna we'll see how it does i i i think we'll have some rpm at least it should just cut through the gears like right now it can occasionally lock an eighth gear when you're really mopping down the highway because this is the eight-speed automatic which i love because even with these big tires it still moves pretty good but with 48s like this thing's gonna mop through gear so that's the plan for the front i did pay for that i did buy an ultimate 44 for the front 48s i also have the rb which i've bought a long time ago from a different jeep which Goodness. we're gonna do the pain in the dick seat mount under the seat mount it stays cleaner that way i think it's a good way to go and then yeah, in the rear cleaner for you <laughs> the pain in the ass and then in the rear the rear is the 44 already so we're gonna keep that it has chromolys in it from the incident so we're gonna do an arb uh it's an rd 245 compressor they are a bitch to get so our twin compressors right now um, I'd love to have done an e-locker in the back. Hell, I would have done the ARB in the front. Either way, I like them to match, but you can't facilitate that at the moment with the set I was trying to go with. So it will have e-locker front, ARB back with the twin in the middle, is what it is. Um, also, of course, putting G2 488s in the back, match it all up. Probably do a truss on the back to make that sucker hold together. So it should be a pretty good potent package. I'm thinking with 44 run rear, locked, chromoly, like, I'm gonna- That's pretty decent, yeah. It is a good package, especially when I'm pushing 40s. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, and then once you get the 40s, you know, you gotta get rid of these tires. Let me can replace mine. Hell of a fucking me... shot. Yeah, the uh, quick update on the, nothing's really gone wrong. Oh wait, something did go wrong. So, real quick, sorry, sorry viewers. Matt, the uh, video for like making a compilation of your Jeep being broken as hell that one day, it just looks terrible. I can't make that look pretty. So okay, we're gonna have to so. this up real quick. All so right. after Ram Off Road, if you did watch our video, thank God you did. Um, it started and ended with Matt's Jeep being winched on by this Jeep. What happened, Matt? I will right, insert so, said video. Wait, that means I'll insert said video after he speaks of what actually broke. So, Matt, go for it. All right, so we were <clears throat> in this one, like, fork section. And I had my locker on. I was trying to get up it, and I knew I had to bounce it. So I bounced it up a little bit, slid just a slight bit to the driver's side, and the rear dropped down and snapped an axle shaft. It snapped it right by my um, brand new ARB. So absolutely railed the ARB. Um, but as you can see, I drove it here. So we are up and back running. Between my parts um, mining skills and your repairing skills, the Jeep is back. Yes. Yes, and our wonderful wonderful bosses of letting me not do it well nope don't go that far yeah we, we're not gonna go there, cut it but, there. Cut it there. <laughs> but in the back now though we are chromoly on the jk so this should be a one-time occurrence yes now i have chromoly's now i have a brand new arb dialed in and we're good to go everything's uh sealed up and we're good um yeah so the jk other than that minor detail of being trailed at home has been very well reliable but exciting news Regardless of whatever, we will go wheeling this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend coming up here. We got two days. Wait, three days? Because we have to work Saturday. We do have to work Saturday. Two so, days. Three days. Thursday, like Friday, Saturday. Well, we'll leave Saturday. Okay, we'll go with two. So, regardless, we're either going to go to 21 Road in Grand Junction, 
which will be dope. We're gonna go with our buddies with that much more capable rigs than us. Or we're gonna go play around in Moab. We're gonna decide yet. We're gonna do one of the two. But yeah, we will gonna... do one of those two things. I swear, we are gonna, not gonna stay here. We are gonna go west. We are gonna go hit up some trails. It's gonna be dope. Hope we get some good fish. If we go with the boys with the better crawlers, we get some really good footage of them doing badass stuff. I'm telling you, forties, stinkies. Oh, and then we can get uh, our third trio of the uh, Red Wrangler gang. Damn straight, and also watch the Daniel 26 <coughs> break because I'm not gonna give two shits about them. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I appreciate y'all watching all 20 of you, and uh, in due time. This thing will be bad ass. This thing's gonna get 40s and tons in no time. Matt says he won't, but it just needs 40s and tons. It's packed, it's big, it's long, and it's, it needs 40s and tons. I'll get a 44 for the front, and we'll go to 40s eventually. But until then, I'm pretty comfortable. It's so much, we're wasting so much weight. We need 40s and tons. I don't know. Super that, that'll that be a, a video for another time. Arguing on what's better. It's not arguing, we don't just, want We'll, we'll go with it, Jonathan. Actually, All right. Because I just ordered a 44. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm not asking for Bitcoin this time, but if you want to, I'll send my link in the description. Appreciate you.